So back in the 90s, I was at a daycare center. Yeah, not the proudest time in my life. And they played some video and I had been wondering, what was that? There were pyramids. I think it might've been an anime, the Halloween theme. There was gonna be a mummy. What was that? And recently-ish, I actually learned that it was called the Halloween tree. This is a Hanna-Barbera produced Halloween special. I guess this must have aired on TV at some point. People have VHS tapes. I watched this on Tubi in a not quite HD transfer, but I guess that's as good as we're gonna see. This animated fantasy TV movie is based on a Ray Bradbury book of the same name, and from what I can read on Wikipedia, it seems fairly related to it. Except we mixed it up with the diversity over here. We added a white girl. Ah yes, the halcyon days in which that would suffice. Before we get into it, I want to give a quick mention to my buddies over at calderalab.com. They just sent me their latest, the Icon. This is great skincare for men. Use my promo code FRY15, save 15% at checkout. Uh, so you got these four kids and their buddy Pipkin seems to have been whisked away to the hospital on Halloween. Oh, it's so sad. But then they see his ghost out in the distance, chase him to this house where there's this, I'm going to say guy. I, I don't, the, the, is this what a human supposed to look like? We see the kids, but this guy, Moundshrod, voiced by Leonard Nimoy, who's putting on a voice, by the way, not just his usual talking voice, which is iconic. He seems to be chasing after Pip, who wants to claim a jack-o'-lantern from this tree that has all jack-o'-lanterns instead of leaves or fruits. So Moundshrod quite obviously tricks our very dense group of kids into pursuing their ghost friend. Their adventure will take them through a world whirlwind of historical periods such as the pyramids, Stonehenge, Notre Dame Cathedral, uh, Mexican cartels, everything giving a little bit of insight to Halloween tradition. I can't really tell you too much about these kids. We've got one that is the fat kid, but today he would be slender. But it is touching that they are so concerned for the safety and well-being of their friend Pip. They're doing everything they can to save them rather than develop character of their own. And Pip is billed as the greatest boy who ever lived looking like Conan O'Brien. Now I can suspend my disbelief for a few things here, but they make a kite and then the kids hold on to the end of it to make the kite's tail. And look, you got to tell me there's some more magical forces behind this than the kids are simply holding on because these kids are dead. They are dead all day long. They are not withstanding this flight. They're falling to their deaths. And yeah, I realize this takes them to ancient Egypt and Oh, but that's outlandish too, Vaughn. Tell me they had some kind of magical dust or whatever. At least later on, they acquire brooms so that they have broomsticks to ride like witches. I'm a bit ashamed that I thought this was an anime. I am so sorry. It is not. It strikes me more as uh, in line with Batman the Animated Series meets Gargoyles. And sure enough, Gargoyles do appear in this. I'm wondering if Disney was taking note because a year later, of course, they have a gargoyles show. Look, aside from maybe teaching your kids a little bit about Halloween tradition, little here makes sense, and I'm not even sure the lessons are going to sink in. Ultimately, the kids who are uh, both taking orders and racing Montrad to uh, rescue Pip, who I don't know why Pip couldn't explain anything to these kids or how he knew what was happening with this pumpkin. It's They make an arrangement, hey, if you'll not take his soul and let Pip live, we'll each give you a year off the end of our lives and that's weird as hell and though they kind of come back home and act like oh it was a dream but i would dreamt about you guys yeah it, i'm under the assumption that montrod took that deal and that's why this is all concluded the way it has but now montrod has a jack-o'-lantern on the halloween tree and uh what you know what, never mind, your kid has no interest in watching this janky-ass animation confusing story. Maybe you'll relive it for nostalgia, only to find yourself disappointed. The Halloween tree comes from an era in which I was merciful enough not to give a star rating to made-for-TV movies, and thus I will not give one here. But you might want to keep the Halloween tree from being a Halloween tradition. If you appreciate a YouTube channel that doesn't just pad out content to get to the 8 minute mark so that it can hammer you with ad breaks, then you should subscribe to my son's channel. You just got done watching it. <laughs>